The thief come only to steal. I'll give you an example. You know, we read it so often. Only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus come to give us life to the abundant. We read it so often. What does the thief come to steal? I'll tell you one example to steal your time. Mm. Just the like YouTube, oh, this video is only 45 seconds. Oh, the next one is only a minute. Yeah. Oh, this one is only two minutes. Boom. Yeah. Wow. Two hours gone. Okay. It could be a whole afternoon is gone. To steal your time. Mm. Oh, I just going to talk a little more. Uh, da, da, da. Steal your time. Mm. And then what does it kill? Kill? Kill your body. How does it kill your body? Little by little. Mm. I'll just eat, drink the soda. Come on, drink the soda. I'll just stay up. Stay up a little later, you know. But, you know, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about somebody, you know. Whatever, whatever the so, Lord. Yeah. Just, just, just eat one more piece of chocolate. Oh, it feels mm. so good. Don't you want yeah. another piece? Yes, yes. Steal your health little by little. To, to steal your time little by little. Kill your body little by little. Kill, you know, a lot of men of God, they got strokes. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's 4G. Okay, for men of God, 4G. One is, uh, first one is gold, money. Mm -hmm. People compromise because they want money. Okay, second, second G is girls, but for girls, it's guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, sexual immorality. Just a lot of men of God fall into uh, temptation. A third one is glory. Glory. Oh, I built this church, 7,000, 10,000 people. Glory, mm -hmm. glory. And then the fourth one is gluttony. Mm -hmm. yes. So many pastors got strike down because of strokes. Mm -hmm. Okay, steal and destroy. Destroy what? Your destiny. Your destiny. You just have to waste your time, steal, steal your time, kill your health. Destroy your destiny. Okay, it's not, this is not a thing. Wow. That's why our dilemma is so important. You know, there's a, so important to know your dilemma because in a, in a Chinese uh, proverb, there's a, there's a proverb that says, if you know your enemy and you know yourself, you fight a hundred, you fight a 10,000 battle, you win every time. Mm -hmm. You fight, you know, <laughs> Chinese is so short. You know, it's that, you know, you have to know yourself, you have to know your dilemma, you have to know your weaknesses. And then you have to know the scheme of the devil. Yeah, amen. Mm. In Jesus' name, we just, the blood of Jesus, um, the, I forgot to do this before him. The blood of Jesus cover me, cover yes. my, cover yes. my son, cover my daughter, cover Julia, yeah. cover Isabel, cover Howell. Yes. As I preach your word, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So. You, you need to know the devil's strategy and then you know what God has in store for you then you can win each battle let's look at some of the devil's strategy I mean uh, scheme okay so here who knows what's the first commandment that's the first commandment why because that's our biggest weakness those runs after other gods will suffer more and more. Right now, our idols, our idols are not wood or rocks. Our idols are what? What? Food? Basically, idol is a thing that to replace God. Whatever you're supposed to get from God, you get from this source. And this source is your idol. Money, kids, people. Whatever, whatever, jobs, mm -hmm. idols, idols. First one, biggest, people's approval. And the biggest idol is money. That's why God used money here. Mm -hmm. You can't serve two masters. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't. You can't serve both God and money because of all the idol, mm -hmm. all the idols, money is running the whole world. Yeah. Wherever the money is, I used to uh, I used to worship idol. I used to be a idol worshiper. I didn't even know. I'll give you an example. Which one is cheaper? I'll buy the cheaper one. Hmm. 
<laughs> Which one is on sale? If it is on sale, I'll buy it. If it's not on sale, I won't buy it. Making decision around the money. Mm. But we're supposed to make decision around God's principle. God, do I need it? <laughs> God, which job should I take? Not, not which job pays more. No. Making decision, always pray. Pray and ask God. Mm -hmm. Biggest, biggest one. Okay. A wicked person listens to deceitful tongue and the and the lie the liar pays attention to destructive to a destructive to a um, to a destructive tongue. So I'll give you an example. The, the next one, the next one is that you know when people talk, if if you hear somebody's talking about you, <laughs> bad news. You know, every time you when you see somebody you like like, oh, let me tell you something, something. I'll tell you, once uh, I, was in a, I was in a church, and when I passed by a restaurant, the pastor happened to come out. So I say hello to the pastor, and I chat a little bit, and then part my way, and he went to his car. After that event, there's a rumor going on that I was having an affair with a pastor. Oh my okay? Okay, so, so just because you hear some man of God is having an affair, it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't necessarily mean it's right. It's true, because I experienced that. Okay, something goes as, oh, I saw Nina in front of the restaurant with a pastor. And then the other person, I wonder what they're doing. I don't know, maybe they were eating together, having lunch <laughs> together. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you know that? Nina and Pastor had a lunch together? Oh, why did they have a lunch? Why did they have lunch together? Oh, maybe they're having an affair. And then, what? Oh, Pastor and Nina is having an affair. This is from a speculation. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And then, so anyway, one day when I was at a conference, a sister came and said, let me tell you what they say behind you. And I go, the, the Bible verse of this came up. Mm. Do I want to be, do I want to have a deceitful, uh, do I want to be wicked? No. Do I want to be a liar? No. So I better not listen. That time, it's a, it's a Holy Spirit to warn me. Amen. And I said, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I feel uncomfortable, I'm unpeaceful, and I ran away. <laughs> it's a Bible strategy. Flee from temptation. Yes. It didn't say stay and fight. It said, flee from ten temptation. Flee. Just flee. Mm -hmm. When I saw, uh, I don't know if you guys know, I deliberately don't want how to teach me how to turn on the TV. Because mm -hmm. I know my dilemma. I know my weakness. I get sucked in. So if I don't even know how to, how to operate these uh, really complicated things, then there's no, no temptation. Mm -hmm. So flee from temptation. Okay, because if I really actually listen to deceitful lips, do you know how long am I gonna get that poison out of my head? Yes. With prayer and forgiveness, sleepless night, trying to oh. justify myself. If I'm, do you know how, how much time and energy is gonna suck from me? Don't even listen to it. Why why would you why would you want like poison come into your mind? I mean, if we eat something bad, we can, you know put it out that way, <laughs> or, or this way, right? <laughs> but if you hear something bad, yeah, how, how do you get it out? Watch mm -hmm. out. People are doing, there's malicious tongue everywhere. Deceitful tongue and destructive tongue everywhere. Mm -hmm. you will, you'll get much more better investment if you don't mm -hmm. spend time on that. This is another, which leads us to the next one, gossip. Gossip. You know why people so love gossip? Because it's like a choice morsel. Yummy dessert. Mmm, so delicious. Oh, I like to that listen. I mm, like to talk, talk, talk. Oh, and then go down to your inmost part. And the problem is, it, when it goes to your inmost part, it starts to dictate you. It starts to control you. It starts to take your eyes off Jesus. So it's gossip. And then you know what? Devil is always listening. 
okay? They're always harvesting your words because our words has created power. God created the heaven and earth with just saying it. Let there be light, there's light. We are made in God's image. Our words are powerful. We can create our lives through words. I'll give you a proof. Many years ago when I entered my middle age, uh, I started to, you know, my hair started falling and stuff. So, so I was like, God, what do I do, what do I do? So, so I started to, and then God gave me an idea because I'm only, I'm only looking at what I don't have and I forgot what I have. Oh God, thank you. Even though I lost half of my hair, because I used to be like, like, you know, a lot of, had a lot of hair. But thank you for keeping half on my head. Thank you so much. And you know what? After I started thanking, my, my hair finally stopped. Mm. It just became like normal, like normal, just some. Not like before, there was a time where just, it was just like, what's going on? Am I really aging? <laughs> like, so, and then, I, I, and then God gave me another idea. Bless my hair. Because our words has created power. Yes. Bless my hair. Bless my hair. And 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 then up. You can command. This is the land you have. God gave you this land. This mm -hmm. land. I speak. I speak to my body. Mm -hmm. I said it many times. If you don't speak over your land, the devil will. Mm -hmm. Okay. The devil will whisper in your in your ear. What are you gonna do if that happens? What are you? And then you agree with devil. To agree shall be done for you. Yeah. Don't agree, please. When you say a word in the spiritual realm, it's material to yes. build. Okay? Do you want a good future? Start releasing the word. I, I try to work 100%. The only trick is you got to be consistent. You cannot give up. It's kind of like a weightlifting. You cannot just say live like uh, two days and you say, oh, there it is. it's not true. Well, God's word is not true. My muscle is still this little. No, it takes every day, every day to live. And then you can you know, become a muscle man. Just like playing piano. You know, I haven't played piano for a long time. You know, and it, it was like, wow, where's my skill? You know, so it's like it, it kind of, you don't use it, you lose it. So you just have to be consistent. Be consistent and trust that God's words is true. His promises are real. You want to agree with God. Okay? And then every time when the, when the evil one come and attack you, run to Jesus. When the devil knocks, ask Jesus to answer the door. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, I'm worrying about my money. What do I do? I'll tell you. This is the King David's strategy. Okay? When you speak your words, has a destination, okay? If, you, if I speak to Jim, the words is addressed to Jim. If I speak to you, the words are addressed to you. If I speak to myself, it will address me. We are in the first heaven. The enemy is in the second heaven. God is on the third heaven, okay? The enemy can steal our words. If we talk to people, our words are stolen. I'll give you an example. Once uh, people were accusing you of some little thing. Oh, I was so sad. I went to talk to Howell. Oh my goodness. Bad idea. <laughs> little accusation grow to a medium one. And then grow bigger and bigger. And it was a mess. It became actual uh, persecution. So I learned. I learned. Just like King Jehoshaphat. When he learned the news that all those the three mm -hmm. nations gonna come attack him, he did not go consult his prime ministers <laughs> or, or talk to his family or something. No, he went straight to the sanctuary. He went straight to God because when you talk to God, your words are addressed to God. And, and nobody can take words from God. Mm -hmm. Nobody. So don't tell you, when you talk to anybody, Okay, the devil can take it and use it against you. Yes. Our words, if you can see it in the spiritual realm, they are material to build your future. You want to speak good words. You want to proclaim God's promise. You want something, start proclaiming it. Yes. I bless myself, this and that. Thank you, God. Faith is that. Faith. 
you know, you, you don't thank God when you, after you got it. You thank God even before. Lord, thank you. Thank you. You're going to give me beautiful ashes. Yes. Thank you by your stripes. I'm healed. I'm proclaiming that. That is my, I agree with you, Lord. So this is the creative power. So if you have anything bad to say, do what King David does. He, he always go, you know, a lot of songs. My enemy is like this, and enemy is like, oh, they're so bad. I want to soak my foot in their blood. May their, no, may their wife become widow and children become orphans. All these ugly things, he say it to God because it's addressed to God. And the enemy cannot steal it. And you know something? It's true anyway. Why hide it? God already knows what's in your heart. Oh, I hate my enemy. I hate my enemy. He already know why not because God is waiting for you to say it. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. In the Bible, there's there's a blind man. Say, King of uh, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. He just kept crying. And then finally, Jesus said, What do you want me to do for? You? What do you want me to do for you? Come on, he's blind. He want to see. And Jesus is God. Of course, he knows. But he want him to say it because the evil one is always evil one another name for the evil one is accuser mm -hmm. he's always like it's not fair he's not asking always accusing so this blind man said i want to see i want to see and then jesus said okay say it you keep saying what you don't want but what do you want Say it. Say it to God. What do you want? Like King David. He said, I want to do this. I want to do that. Da, da, da. That's all the truth. Because God is looking for worshipers. Yes. Worshiping truth yes. and spirit. Mm -hmm. Not your money. Not your... Oh, money is... Oh, your tithing, of course. But, you know, it's like truth and spirit. Okay? Well, God did say that. You know, tithing, so I can argue with that. So... so Truth and spirit be true, like King David. You know, King David was murdered. He 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 committed murder and he adultery, but God still called him the man after my own heart. Yeah. And you know, Psalm is the thickest, biggest book in the whole entire Bible, and Psalm is in the middle of the Bible. That's what we need. Be true to God, and you can say anything to God, and He will comfort you, and and fix you because in the Psalms if you look at after David complain 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 and then you can see his psalm changes because God is healing him and fixing him and restoring him he always end at a happy note always you go go look at the psalm and there's a strategy in the secular world it's called love letter strategy he said you write you write all your frustration you don't stop until you reach love God is love until you can feel God's presence again. I'll give you an example. Uh, once uh, I had a misunderstanding with somebody. This time I was smart. I didn't tell how. I didn't go complain to how. I just went to God. God, I had this misunderstanding. I tried to fix it. I tried to explain it, but it just gets muddy and muddy. And now, now it's like hopeless. What do I do? What do I do? And then I, after I pour out, I feel I felt peace in my my heart. So I just left the room. I said, God, be still and know you're God. So just tell me what to do. And then the next time, this man was in our small group. My my best, that time, my, my best friend in the small group's husband. So the husband used to treat me really nice uh, with respect and uh, extra courtesy. And, and uh, after the misunderstanding happened, he just avoided me and not talking to me. And then the very next time when the group, small group meet again, he act like beginning, like nothing happened. I was like, wow, God, did you perform brain surgery or something? <laughs> that he remo you move, removed that piece of memory or something? Because he act like nothing. Like just say like before, really cur courteous and respectful and then just like before. When, all, when God does it for you, it's like yeah. King Jehoshaphat. I will fight for you. God yes. said, I will fight for you. You don't have to do anything. And just be still and know he's God. 
a lot of time, the less we do, the more God can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really. So that would, every time when you, when you get God to do your thing or, or to solve your problem, it's perfect. Like, so that's, this is, it's perfect. Amazing. Huh? So, next one. Okay, here. Next one that steal our time, exhaust our time, is being a busy buddy. Mm -hmm. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Okay, whoever uh, meddle with, you know, strive not is not his own. Is like uh, one who takes a dog by the ear. I'll give you an example. Long time, uh, one, uh, once uh, there's a there's a a friend came to me. You know, my father, he abuses me. Oh, da, da, da. tell me all kinds of sad story. Would you please uh, help me? I want to move out. He's like 19, you know. He's legally, he can move out. So I went home and I asked God. And then he went to the other friend, say the same thing. So this friend actually helped him to move out. So after he, and then help him with his tuition, because before he had to rely on his daddy, because the dad is paying for the college tuition. So this, this person, this is a professor, paid his rent, paid his tuition, and then uh, as soon as this guy graduated, nowhere to be found. So th my professor friend is so hurt, because he invested so much in this friend, and he's so hurt. And then, sometime later, he got a phone call from the police. This guy got beat up and he, really bad and is in the hospital. So, when I prayed and asked God, the, the thing I feel is that let him stay with his daddy so his dad can discipline him. Because this guy obviously hang out with some bad friends, sketchy friends, you know. So. You know, you never know. Sometimes people are in tribulation because they need it. God is trying to refine yes. them. Yes. Maybe God is doing something. You gotta ask God. Don't yes. don't mess don't mess around with people's lives. It's it's serious because they were all Christian. This this young man is Christian. That professor is Christian. It's a it's a you know everyone is Christians. So uh, don't don't matter because you can it can eat up your energy and time. And the next one, look at this. Murderer, thief, evildoer, and busybody. Can you believe it? Busybody is listed in evil doing and thief and murder. So here, this is like just this four. Can you believe busybody is listed among these thief, murderer, and evildoer? It's not little things. This can actually just destroy your destiny. Steal your time and energy. Pray before. Pray, please. This is wow. such a big trap. You have to know the devil's strategy. He will make you run around and be so busy to do the good thing. To, to keep you away from the God thing. You need to do God thing. Because everybody is different parts of a of a body of Christ. You have your job, you have your destiny, you have your unique mission. Don't, don't just do somebody else's. I mean, imagine if my foot is trying to do my hands work. I tried it, you know why? Because before I was in a sling, I broke my hand. I need to clip my nail. Uh, this, this thing cannot clip <laughs> this nail. I tried with my foot. Anyway, that's another story. Okay, it doesn't work. Okay, it's very, very. So anyway, next one. This leads us to the next one. Okay, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will take account. So every careless word you speak, for by your words you will be justified, and your words, be, by your words you will be condemned. Watch out what you say. Watch out what you say. Men, words are many, sins are not absent. This is on the Bible. Watch out, a lot of time we get in trouble because of what we say. You know, in my life, I have went through a lot of persecution, but not one persecution was because, not one persecution 
was I did nothing wrong, it's all their fault. Not one, because even once I, I thought I was all righteous and they are just, and I went before God, God, what's going on, what's going on? And God showed me my hidden sin because I was looking for approval in those people. That was my sin. And the, the devil used that to attack me. Because when you look for approval from somebody, you are elevating them to be your judge. Whenever you're justified, whoever you're, you, if you're justifying yourself to somebody, you're elevating them to be your judge. Why would you want so many judges in your life? Well, why would you want to do that? Let yes be yes and let no be no. This is a, you know, what, this is a big trap, big trap. Next one. God will help heart above all, for it determines the course of your life. Why is this related? Because if you want to know, if you want to know your heart condition, watch out what you say. Because out of, the, this is Bible, for scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the, out, the mouth utters. Mm -hmm. So watch out, watch what you say. You can kind of calibrate, kind of test and, cal and, and uh, your heart condition. Okay, next one. <coughs> Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth labor into your heart, into his, his harvest. Remember it's his harvest. Okay, every time when you want to go preach to somebody, want to go correct somebody, want to go help somebody, pray first. Pray first. Once, uh, once I, I, I think this young man really needs to be saved, thank God I didn't go approach him. I prayed first. And then I didn't hear anything. I, I didn't hear any mission from God. And the, a few months later, I met him. He became a Christian. God sent young people to him. God sent people. God sent. God, who, God knows what kind of labor he should need to send. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I might not be his flavor, you know. One man's, po one man's medicine is another man's poison. One man's, treasure is, one man's trash is another man's treasure. God knows everybody. Before you go preach to somebody, before you want to correct somebody, start praying. If you hear people saying stuff that you think is wrong or it's really wrong, when you are listening, start praying already. Because a lot of time you do too much, you, you just mess, you can mess things up. When I say you, it doesn't mean you, okay, just in general. It's a, you can mess things up. You can yes. make it worse. Pray, pray, pray. Why so? Once my daughter woke up, Mommy, I don't want to go to the church. I'm so tired. I want to sleep. I started praying. I was like, God, if you think today she go to church, it's going to be good for her. Let her go. If it's not going to make any difference, then forget it. So I said, oh, yeah, sure. So I just do my thing. And then 10 o'clock, by the time that I'm supposed to leave, my, my daughter just came, boom, 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 just came downstairs, all dressed, everything, just, I didn't say, oh, I thought you didn't want to go. No, if I say that, I will ruin it because she, go, she will go, right? She will go like, oh, I'm not going to go. No, I didn't say anything. I just let it be, let, let, it, let God decide. So, and then all the time, there's a young, there's a, there's a relative told me that he thinks, he thinks he want to find a partner, okay? I started to panic, okay? <laughs> you know what partner means, right? Oh my goodness, I start praying. Uh, I just listen, I pray. I didn't get any words from God. I, I'm telling you, I made so many mistakes because I say something, I made it worse. Yeah. And then you know what? Many, many months later, God sent a girl, okay? And this girl worked on him uh. for so many months. And this, this relative fell in love with this girl. Now he want to find a wife. Amen. Okay? God did it. I mean, because you can talk to people's heart, uh, mind, but only God can change people's heart. Amen. I'm not kidding. It's, it's, uh, it, it really is so true. You start praying. Start praying. Oh, 
just this afternoon, some sister was saying, you know, last time I was sharing my small group and this lady shamed me and this and that. I said, oh, stop, 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 stop. Let's pray. Because I don't want to listen to God. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Let's pray together so the package yes. is, is addressed to God. Amen. Okay, let's just do the King, King David style. So we pray together, we pray together, and we pray together, and then, so, and then, because she said, oh, you know what, what that sister said, she lost sleep over it, and she couldn't sleep, and this and that, and then, you know, it was severe, it was really bad, but God fixed it. We prayed, and, uh, and then, and then I got some words, I got some words, uh, it's a long story, so long story short is that she became from grieving and she be, became totally, totally just happy and look. Amen. The final word is that, is that this is an assignment from God, you know. Mm -hmm. and, but anyway, it's a, it's a long story, it's very detailed. It's a, I will uh, spare you. But sometimes just get a word from God and ask some question or a question from God and things start to unravel. You try it, you test it, you, you try it yourself, you'll find out how good, how true God is and how perfect things yes. are. Yes. And uh, I must move on. Okay. Live in harmony with each one. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Some version translated, don't be too proud to enjoy the company of lowly people. And don't think you know it all. Oh. I'll tell you why. I'll give you an example. You know, a lot of times God blessed me through lowly people. And God delivered his love through lowly people. I'll give you one example. Before I go to the ice rink, I, before I go almost every day, and the janitor, <laughs> the janitor, the, the Mexican English, really hard to understand. Oh, hi! Get away from me. And then he does that to other people and people just avoid him. And then I came home and I, I talked to God. And and so I got instruction from God to say, basically this one. <laughs> so next time I said, Well, how are you? So I repented my pride. Because basically it's pride. You despise the lowly people, you know, it's just disgusting. Get away from me. You're repulsive, repulsive, you know. <laughs> I basically just just uh repented and wait on God and have God change me and all that stuff. And then I said, oh, hi, how are you? And then I'm like, oh, God, what do I say? Uh, can you make this fast and let it in? You know, so I just pray, I pray. So I have to pull out my skates. The skates take a long time because there's many, many laces. Uh, okay, so I wish there's a golf for one, you know, like a ski boots. Just. But anyway, that's another story. So I was putting on my lace and he was telling me, you know, anyway, Hardly understanding. Oh yeah, and then I got a question in my head. Do you do you know Jesus? So I was like, Oh, do you know Jesus? And then, okay, so so he tell me stuff, and he goes to this Catholic church. Most of it I don't understand. Okay, but long story short, I lost something. He would put it aside for me. I lost in just one thing. I lost, you know, because I, I go almost every day. I lose a lot of stuff. And then when I fall down. <laughs> When I fall down, when I fall, he's the one who get me ice pack, band-aids. Every time when I go to the rink, I was treated like the queen. He served me hands and um, um, hands and foot, whatever the English expression is. When I lose something, keep it for me. And it's like, you know the director of the ice skating ring? I used to try to, you know, make friends with that guy. But they don't have the time of the day for me. These people, yeah, they, you know, I despise the lowly people, they despise me too, you know. So, nobody, when I go to the ring, nobody will pay attention to me, nobody care about me. This, God blessed me so much through this one, one guy. It's like having a, a, a personal servant without paying for it, you know. So anyway, God will bless you. Just watch it. All the biggest blessing is through the yes. lowly people. Yeah. So don't look, don't look for love in the wrong places. 
looking for love in all the wrong places. So don't do that. Because <laughs> God, God has, God's way is opposite of our way. Yeah. Opposite. So if you don't know what God's will, will is, find out what's your will and go the other way. You <laughs> most likely hit God's will. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next one, next one. Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Men's life does not consist of the abundance of his possession. The possession can be what? Can, can be degrees. Some people have like what? Three PhD or whatever. Uh, possession can be uh, all kinds of stuff. It doesn't have to be car or houses or... Uh, it's not. Men's life. Men's life. Greed. Before, uh, when, I, before when I was... Uh, when I heard these... You know some stories? The scammer, they scammed the the life saving of some old people. Uh -huh. I feel so bad for them. I was like, oh wow, what is And then an uh, uh, elderly person says something to me. You will never be scammed if you are not greedy. Mm -hmm. All these people are scammed because they are greedy. Uh -huh. Greed and pride and greed is the two biggest sin in our life. And the evil one used these two to trap us. Greedy. Every time, like, God, am I being greedy? Or, or this is your will? Watch out. And then you know what? If you have that, hey, it's easy. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Repent, repent. You know, sometimes I would feel sadness come, or some kind of spiritual, like, something is happening. The first I, this, I, I watched somebody do this and it really works. I just go, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. The blood. When I go to eat chocolate, you know, I, I allow me uh, one day in a week, I can splurge. That's Saturday. All the other day, I have to eat healthy because once a week, it's okay. It's not going to hurt you. In fact, it's going to build your body to be able to stand up to these bad stuff. It, it, it actually trains your immune system because you don't want to be a bubble baby. So, but in providing you're eating six days healthy to build up your immune system yes. to, because it's, it's like the sickling people, you want him to go train for marathon, he's just gonna like, it's just gonna hurt him. But if you are healthy and strong, you go train for marathon, you go, you go train for any, is whatever, you know, weight training, you're gonna get stronger and stronger. But if you're weakly, so weakly you can't. You can't go train. You have to lie in the hospital. I don't know. You know. So six days you have to eat healthy. That gives you strength. And one day you can splurge. And then sometimes, sometimes, you know, I got all these things lay on the table, okay? Chocolate, whatever. Eat chocolate, chocolate. The urge comes. The urge comes. Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Until the urge passes. Want to go watch YouTube? I have YouTube on, on my cell phone. I deleted it. And then it was very inconvenient because a lot of stuff is on YouTube. So, so I'm like, oh, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, until it, until it passes. That's one of the strategy. The other one is to repent. The other one is to wait on God. Yeah. Because every time when you, when you crave sweets, for example, is because the love tank is empty. You need love. Okay, just just example. If you crave uh, salty things because you're stressed. Okay, so so basically what what really fills your love tank and dis and then re uh, and release your stress is God. Go to God. Mm -hmm. He always refreshes you. So but during the meantime you blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, you know. So so this is uh here's the next one. Another that eats your time and energy is regret. Oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. Oh, regret, regret. Oh, so much time. I, I used to be consumed with regrets. So I prayed to God. I said, God, help me. And this came to me. God, I, I'm so sorry. I, I'm feeling bad that I did this and I didn't <laughs> capture that opportunity and I lost this and that. God, thank you. Thank you. I claim, I claim to give unto them beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. I claim beauty for ashes. 
Thank you, Lord, for your beauty for my ashes. Why ashes? Because a lot of things you can still use it or restore it or fix it. But when it burned down to ashes, that's the end of it. Yes. But God can even give you his beauty. In the Chinese translation, Chinese is translated from the original language. In the Chinese, it says crown, his crown, his glorious crown for your ashes. White crown, crown symbolizes authority. And also of all the ring and necklace, everything, the crown is the best one, the best one. So beauty, he's beautiful, your ashes. Proclaim that. I've been proclaiming it every time when regret, when the enemy uses regret to eat me up. Every time I go and tell God oh, my, all my junk, all my garbage. And then proclaim beautiful ashes. Beautiful soul. And then it's like peeling onion. You have to be consistent. Because every time it peels a layer, it's kind of, kind of way, like weightlifting. I was a weakling. And now I think I'm getting some muscle. Mm -hmm. just, just consistent, consistent. Okay, and the next one, that leads to... Don't look back. You can't drive someplace looking back. Uh. You're gonna crash. Guarantee. Okay? Jesus said unto them, No man having put his hand to the plow and look back is fit for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. There's a Chinese saying that says, What's past is already dead. But what's ahead is still you still have hope. So look ahead. This is another thing that, looking back is another thing. It's another thing that eat up our energy and time. Because a lot of people go reminiscing. Oh, the good old day. I used to be this. I used to be this. I used to do that. I used to do that. Hey, it's gone. It's done. Move forward. There's a Chinese saying, A great man does not mention his past glory. It's like, oh, you know, once a, once a, a relative of, of mine saying, well, you know, you know, I used to be that thin, you know, like, uh, I used to be that thin, and he, she's pointing at me. I used to be that thin, it's no big deal, I used to be that thin, that thin. I used to be that thin, and I, you know what that American lady said? So what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's not what's past, it's what, what are you now? What happened? Okay, anyway. Okay, next time. Okay. Uh, brother and sister, <laughs> I do not concern myself yet. I've taken hold of it. But one thing I do know, forgetting what's behind and straining for yes. what is ahead, I press on. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Look forward. So don't fall into that trap either in that next trap. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Another trap that consumes our energy and time and strength is worrying about tomorrow. Amen. It really, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you something. My son, forgive me my son. <laughs> my son uh, last semester said, I don't think college grades are going to matter. Because after college, I'm going to find a job anyway. So I'm just going to do minimum work and just pass. And I'm like, God, you know, what, you, you know what is best for him, so you decide. So instead of worry, worry about tomorrow, I gave it to God. Because there's nothing I can do. I used to lecture him, but I just made him worse. So I quit. Thank God. So, um, so anyway... <laughs> Thank God, I, I repented because one day my son says, I'm done, I'm not going to church anymore. He said that to me, and I was like, oh God, what have I done? So I went to repent, repent, repent. Keep my mouth shut, no more Bible beating for one year. He went back to church. I'm serious, don't worry, don't worry about tomorrow. And then you know what, I just got a phone call from my son uh, last week. Mommy, I'm so upset I lost those points. I want to get perfect score. And I want to get A's in every courses. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, yes, worry yes. doesn't doesn't work. Mm. You tell God your worry. You tell God Amen. your worry. Address your package to God. Nobody can steal it. Mm -hmm. And then tell God what you want. You kept telling God what you don't want. What do you want? Tell God. Okay. For if there's be first a willing mind, it's accepted. It's accepted according to what a man has, not what, according to what he doesn't have. You know, all these things I just mentioned, I still struggle with them. Mm -hmm. yes. Because it's not me doing, it's any, this is what I say, if I do something bad, it's me. If I actually do something good and fruitful, effective, it's God. It's, it's that. That's why I say my biggest dilemma is me. Is that don't worry about too many things. God just wants your willingness. The only thing he gave you is your free will. Okay? We're all born sinful. We're all prideful. We, we all have greed. We all have all these junk. That's why repentance is. That's why Jesus said, repent for the, heaven, for the kingdom of heaven is here. Repent. Repent. You want to be promoted? You want to move forward, promote it to the penthouse, penthouse, then you repent. Okay, is that, does that work? Repent so you can go to the penthouse. Okay, anyway, I don't know. Maybe it didn't work. <laughs> okay, so, now, I just encourage you that you just have to be willing because, you know, there's a Bible verse that says, what? What you didn't receive? Everything you received it. So if you receive the white boast as you if you didn't receive it, everything we have is from God, is from Christ. Okay? And then God take us through this journey so we can help other people. Not so that we can despise them and criticize them and I'm better than you. No. Not like that. So we can just have compassion because we receive the mercy from God. Yes. And so right now, we're gonna go into prayer time. Okay, if you are willing to rededicate yourself, to seek him with your whole heart, Lord, help me. Help me to spend more time with you. Help me to really get Christ in me. Let Christ increase and me decrease. Help me to fulfill my destiny. Help me not to waste time. Help me to do the God thing, not just busy about with good things. Help me not to be prideful. Help me to not to be greedy. Help me to repent. So right now, Lord, we just come before you. We're going to have some quiet time. You and God. Just let the Holy Spirit come and change you. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, there is freedom. You want to be free. Free to love. Free to receive God's blessing. Be free and let the Holy Spirit come. Holy Spirit will pray. Please come. Come and change us. Come, open our eyes. Come, open our hearts. Come, we need Jesus. We need Jesus in us in order to have that abundant life that you promised us. Help us, Lord. Thank you.